Hey there folks, this is David on David Spray. Welcome back to our ongoing Let's Play of Disco Elysium for the PS4. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, and contribute to my Patreon. Links in the description at the bottom. Oh god, what did we do last time? Uh, let's see, we found out, we found a statue, how the previous monarchy was a, uh, the previous monarch was a complete shithead, and, uh, what was it? Alright, anyways, yeah, now we're in a bookstore, and yeah, finally following up on what that little girl was going on about, and yeah, I'm just gonna go and talk to the book owner here, see if she knows anything. Uh, oh yeah, and oh yeah, and uh, next door we uh, tried a bunch of doors, found some lady, and she mistook me for someone else, and or maybe she mistook me for someone else, I don't know. But anyways, now to go and figure out what's going on behind that closet there. Let's see. Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Alright, Plaisance. Be welcome, and please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. So, are you the owner of the store? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Uh, let's see. Uh, your daughter's the one standing outside the store, right? Annette, yes. My daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? Yeah. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yes. Great. On a scale of one to ten, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? Her uh, opinion of her daughter depends on how well she lured you into the store. I'm not going to grade a human being. I don't do that. Come now. It's not personal. It's about proper sales practices and market research. I expect an answer. All right, fine. Ten. She was certainly very polite and helpful. Maybe now she'll eat. My precious. Her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. Let's see. Now, the way you're handling her strikes me as wrong. Mind your own business, sir. In our society, people don't get to tell each other how to raise their children. It's none of your or anyone's business. All this pressure has really made her anxious. You know she's been chewing her nails? God, I've told her not to do that. It's disgusting. And I told you to mind your own business. Clearly, you have no idea how hard it is to raise a girl in this economy. This economy is a mysterious force. Like cosmic weather. Mysterious and harsh. Yeah, uh, yeah, the economy and your daughter are two completely different things. She doesn't have anything, uh, she can't do anything about it. She can, if she has enough willpower. This is what's called growing pains. Life isn't easy. Life doesn't give breaks. Come on, ma'am. It's obvious she can't do anything about it. You are placing an unnecessary burden on a young child. Let's see. Uh, what you're doing is wrong. Even I know that, and I usually don't know anything. Oh no. Hold on. I need to invite her inside and apologize. She must be freezing out there. There. I don't know what to say to you. My husband, he tries to teach me business lessons. I have what my mother called a dull mind. All this stress. It sounds like both the husband and the mother treat her the way she treats Annette. Hmm. Uh, you're, uh, you're like Annette to your husband and your mother. Oh. Well, my mother was horrible, of course. Absolutely perverse energies around that person. But my husband... My husband is completely different. Of course. Of course. Is his husband Annette's father? Yes. My husband is a successful entrepreneur east of the river. If only he were more involved in the business we're running up here. No matter. Soon we'll both be off for Grand Couron. Wait, Grand Couron? What's that? It's a proper place to live. One of the most peaceful neighborhoods east of Jamrock. You may know it for its massive housing projects. Most of the buildings are empty at the moment. It's a great opportunity to get ahead of the crowds. Better times ahead for sure. And your husband's also involved with the bookstore. He made the initial investment. Since then, he's been what you might call a silent partner. Is she an only child? Yes, I'm afraid so. A real treat she is. It would be nice if she had 
No, we couldn't have afforded more children, really. Not in this economy. A glimmer of sadness blinks through the well-crafted exterior. Of course. Yeah. The economy. Exactly. And she told me she doesn't go to school anymore. She's been too busy helping me here. So she studied at home this trimester. This is a temporary solution, of course. I assure you, I of all people understand the importance of education. She will be back in school the moment the store takes off. All right, well, when do you know that's going to happen? Yes. A glimmer of sadness blinks through the well-crafted exterior. We're Why quite not? busy people, you know, my husband and I. Quite busy. Children are a lot of work. You don't look like a father, so I don't expect you to understand. I'm sorry. I'm sure you do understand. All right, I had something else in mind. Let's see. Well, what if I want to buy a book? Goodness, you were already doing good browsing the shelves. Why do you stop? Don't you feel compelled? Go, go, get back there. The books await you. Uh, uh, uh you, uh, these are uh, these are not the droids you're looking for. These are not the droids I'm looking for. Everything is on the shelves. Take a look yourself. The shelves compel you, don't they? Right. You you don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. All right. Farewell for now, book peddler. Lonesome. Long way home. Here we go. Home awaits. Walk past Station 41 and through the market. Past the Boogie Street Spearhead to the other side of the lake, the frozen eye at the center of the district. Then, past the video rental store on the corner. There, at the end of a street lined with pine trees, a small house no larger than a matchbox. 11 Voyager Road. You no longer live there. Those times are gone. And so are those people. Why did you come here? Why are you still here? And where's the dealer? You have to get back to work. That's all you have now. The dealer? Let's see. Learning cap for perception raised to five, and speed gives one sigh. Bonus, let's see. Learning cap for perception raised to five and speed. Yes. Let's see, where is perception? Uh, learning caps raised to five. Let's go and talk to Annette again. I'm sorry, sir. I can't talk right now. I'm very busy with my homework. I have so much homework now. You just can't win. Out of the rain and into the gutter. Um, let's see. Uh, what are you missing here? Why does this feel so familiar? All right, let's try again. All right, what are you doing now? Math. It's really difficult. Like, really they say you need it to get rich. Better than standing outside in the cold, I guess. Oh, oh, I found something while you were away. What is it? I thought this would fit you. Like, thanks for helping out. Not me. The city, I mean. Like a detective does. Uh, wait, where did you get it? Just what Dick Mullen would ask. I got it from behind the curtains. I'm not really supposed to go there. Is it, uh, Fedora? Maybe. It's the hat Dick Mullen wears all the time. You'll look way more serious with that. Right, I have to get back to my homework now. Before Mum notices. Man, 
This is hard. All right, why does this feel so familiar? All right, let's roll them bones. Because you know each other. She's been talking to you so openly because you've talked before. All right, uh, hang on. So you know me? We've met before. Yes, I used to stand out there all the time before Mother told me to focus on my homework. You've been running around all week without your shirt on, sir, apologizing to everyone. I don't really understand what you've done wrong. Uh, did I ever talk to you? Apologizing all week? Of course, you stopped by a few times. You certainly look better than the last time I saw you. Uh, thanks. I'm trying. Yeah, I can see. You don't have party eyes anymore. Party eyes? Yes, of course. That makes sense. Party eyes? I'm not surprised children have seen you running around with party eyes on, he thinks. Not at all. You know, like a cat in the dark, all big and wide-eyed. <laughs> it certainly looks odd on a man. Uh, is that like an expression or something like that, or just a local thing? The swiveling eyes of a loony drug addict. Oh. That is what she meant. You were probably going into. Good thing she didn't say party eyes loud. Her mother's nearby. Fuck yeah. You should get some party eyes right now. Snap those sequins on you, boy. Uh, does that mean I've been partaking in narcotics? Oh, baby. That's not what you have to worry about. Worry about the important thing. So why didn't you tell me you knew me to... So why didn't you tell me you knew me to begin with? I didn't know I had to do that. Uh, thanks. I learned something about myself today. Thanks. I'm glad I could help you, sir. Alright, see you around, Annette. Alright, let's see. Encyclopedia. Books Dick Mullen's hat. If anything, this wide-rimmed hat looks even better than the hat Dick Mullen wears. Dick Mullen's stupid. Not even real. You're real. Your brain's real. Your real, real brain's inside the hat. Alright. Cool. Alright, now to go and see what this whole curse is all about. You see a tattered set of curtains and a polyhedron-shaped cage-like trinket. Uh, what's behind the curtains here? Oh, please go back to browsing the book. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. All right. You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. This is a traditional Seminese ward, meant to provide protection against ill luck, bad dreams, curses, and other supernatural scourges. And who are the Seminese? Inhabitants of Ile de Fenton, the Seminine Islands down south. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. All right, let's go and... All right, let's take the plunge. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? Let's see. Is this about the curse? That's why you're afraid. No, it's just a storeroom for the employees, I told you. Now please step away from the curtains. Ma'am, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. Oh, why would you say that? I'm sorry, I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. The curtains do seem frail suddenly. Not robust enough to contain a slippery darkness. Um, but I sense this place is calling for me. I must investigate beyond the threshold. You do? My god, even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear sir. Alright, I'll think about it for a while. Thank you. 
Let's just talk about this first, all right? There's no reason for you to venture into the unknown. There is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as if taunting you. Hmm, so there is something about those curtains. Hmm. Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome <clears throat> to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Uh, why are you so uptight about those curtains? I just want to know what's on the other side. I already told you. It's just a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. If it's just a storage room, then why does it have a 70s ward protecting it? It's just for decoration. Okay, fine. It's just because this place is cursed. Just like everyone said. They don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? Uh, how does this curse manifest itself? The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. Didn't, didn't that curtain just move? Wait, what? <clears throat> Let's see. Ah, uh, Annette mentioned that the previous tenants have experienced financial troubles. It's not just that, officer. We're dealing with something supernatural here. It's the cacodemons feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. Wait, cacodemons? Wait, so what? Do I need the doom marine now? There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence. As if I was unwanted here. It sounds familiar. Strange. I feel I'm wanted too. What does it mean? Truly so? Perhaps the dark energies are leeching off you. You shouldn't stay in the store too long. It may be dangerous. Hmm. And why don't you just tell me right away it's cur- Uh, why don't you just tell me right away it's the curse? It's not good to talk about the curse. Not in detail. The negativism. It's dangerous. Talking about the void wraiths angers them. Wow. Void raves. You have new words. Void raves, eh? That's okay. Trippy. Have you sought help from anyone? Yes. I've contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Simonese mediators. They provided me with the wards. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear it's not enough. Is your appended part of the wards as well? Oh, this? No, it's a special Hymian amulet blessed by desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. Uh, it sounds like you got fleeced. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, let's just pretend that we're not nuts here. And All right, would you like me to take the case? I could investigate and see if the curse is real. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be so they can return to their slumber. All right, so we are ourselves a 72% check here. Negative one because I gave smart ass parenting advice, but plus two because I helped out a net. All right, let's roll. Slither up to her, you silver tongued fiend. Show her what world class perfidy looks like. Uh, wait, what if I don't want to lie? You're not lying. You're giving her peace of mind. The means are thus justified. All right, fine then. All right, fine then, Iago. I'll play along. Ma'am, I came here to help. I've had a paranormal, a paranormal situations before. Are you sure? I don't think I haven't seen charlatans before. I sense the psychic emanations from afar. The sleeper beyond calls out. I'm not sure I can trust your claims. Honestly, you look like a bit of a drinker. I'm sorry for being so blunt, but... Hey now, hey, hey, hey. You need the booze to focus, all right? Go ahead then. Rock her world, he thinks. 
I'll compose some notes. All right, let's see. All right, you see, it's necessary. Oh, let's see. I admit, I've had my fair share of drinks, but only because the spectral realm is parapsychologically taxing. How do you know all this? Here we go. Let's see. Uh, your wards brought me here in the first place. The Simonese blood also runs through me. You're part Simonese? Oh, it means our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. The hand of fate guides us. But I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. You are certain you can help us? Keep us safe? I can't allow any collateral damage to hit us. Uh, just ask my partner, Kim. He'll vouch for me. Oh, uh... Certainly so, ma'am. I can assure you my partner is eminent in this particular field. If you promise, good officer, then you might be our last hope. Do you swear it? On my honor. Thank you, sir. There's one more thing I haven't told you about yet. The entity. Do not act surprised. You know of these things, sire. Of course, the entity. Oh wait, you mean the thing that's been attacked, uh, that used to attack Linkara? Yes, the entity. a malignant entity that lives inside the chimney. It takes the form of a woman, a witch most likely. She or it must be connected to the curse somehow. Uh, chimney. Uh, chimneys aren't big enough for, uh, uh, mm. chimney. The passage between heaven and hell, of course. Yes. That chimney is part of the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Some unnatural magic, I assume. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. Oh, and... Please do return to me after you've looked round. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. What you discover in there. Unbelievable darkness and ruin. Hmm, I had a few more questions about this curse here. Okay, but please, only a few questions. You wouldn't want to disturb the spirits. And uh, never mind, I had other questions. Farewell for now, book peddler. All right, that worked. Let's see. Investigate the doomed commercial area. Uh, people say the commercial building in the plaza is cursed. No business will ever thrive there without going bankrupt. You promised Placian so you'll look into it. Uh, plus, uh, on Placian's whomever. And you'll uh, enter the sealed door behind the bookstore and find out what happened to the companies there. Search for the malignant entity. Placian says she lives inside a chimney. Find a way in. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little Seminese wards. Your shadow looming over it like an omen. Oh! Mm. Don't keep me waiting now. What's in there? In that dark sarcophagus? Hold on, I, was, I, I haven't actually done anything yet. I just wanted to ask oh. a few questions. What about? Uh, never mind, I was wondering what your O was about there. <laughs> Ghostly silhouette of hair dryers. A vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. So, Billy Idol. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Semenese trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Only an echo. No one is there. All right, let's, oh uh, yeah, no need for this. Let's just unlock it with the key. After exerting some force, you manage to turn the key. It's eerily silent. The door slides slightly open, letting a draft of cold air into the room. Uh, 
All right, let's go and see what this mysterious curse is. And this witch in the metal, whatever it is. I swear, if it's going to lead me into a jump scare, then I am just going to... All right. All right, let's go and see what this big bad curse is. It's just a gym. What is this place? Looks like a gym. Uh, I think this may be the Arth Arthur boxing glove for young athletes. I think you're right. No, it looks like no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. An airy feeling rises in your chest. Let's see. Well, there's a reason why nobody's been here for ages. Yes, because it's closed. No need to look for supernatural explanations where a banal one will do. Now let's move on, shall we? All right, let's see. Got ourselves a skill here, so let's see. Hmm. All right, so. All right, so it looks like we will need some help in composure. A small metal ball. Perfect. A shot put ball. Sam's tripping from a punch bag. All right, Curtis Fortis. Well, let's see, a ball used for playing shot put. A favorite pastime of elderly gentlemen. You feel like you should hold on to this and make good use of it. Sell such beautiful old school sports equipment would be a sin. A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Why does it feel so familiar? Um, let's see. Lift the barbell. Yeah, no. No, it's the collars there. Is this familiar because I'm a weightlifter? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber. The squeaky sound of sneakers, your bruised knee against the mat, and a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. Because I was a boxer. It's just a memory. A memory from another life. When you were young and fit. Oh, uh, look him. It's a trap. There's no collars on the barbell. You're right. The weight may fall off. Better not touch it then. Hmm, what kind of bastard would uh, uh, just remove the collars? Should be a felony. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating, but it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. Uh, blocked by old window uh, panes and debris.
Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins, with organs shining under their skin, and even ether welkins, hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? One of the welkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different, however. All right, let's take a look here. It's Vara Hanira, a high welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a Welkin supremacist. The note says all non-Welkin races will be purged. Uh, yeah, a Welkin supremacist, eh? So, uh, so, racist LARPers, then? The Haldor, the Tuorg, the humans, and even headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin. Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little welkin creatures. Let's see, why would anyone spend so much time on this? Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. Hmm. Uh, who are these creatures? Who drew them? Uh, are they... Well, let's see. One of them is a welkin supremacist. Mm hmm Political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. Let's see, who are these creatures? Who drew them? This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Right. Well, this has been educational. Let's move on. Just look at those details. So much effort. And for what? All gone. All right, inspect the photos. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers, boreal dvorg, yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way, like eggnog. Or morphine, a much needed respite from our own world. A pinned postcard reads, the heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. All right, the schedule here. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like sprint, daily minimi, and GPI span the marker drawn grid the grand scheme of production and money. Minimi stands for a mini meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN. Station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago, but failed. All right, what happened then? As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Looks like they didn't make it. Mm. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, See the prod schedule filament for details. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, we're all untethered, and heat death of the universe. 
So what is this guy like designing like concept art for like a uh, some medieval supremacist villain or something like that? This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. The radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone inside. This is the Ream Civic radio computer. Model RC5120. Equipped with a Feld mainframe and a Ream compatible printer. You think I should turn it on? We have one of these down at the station, but I never really learned how to use it. That doesn't answer my question. I'm gonna turn it on. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. This is where the memory should go. All right, so no memory. It, I'd basically just be just wasting my time with these buttons then. Let's sorry. Play? Nothing happens. Something's missing. There's no tape in the player. Nothing happens. Something's missing. There's no tape in the player. Nothing happens. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic tiles. Very pathetic. Mm, hold on. How do I know what Cadran mosaic tiles are supposed to look like? History classes. Students with their textbooks open. Studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. What am I looking at here? Looks like a Venn di looks like a plant or something like Radio that. Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6. UKV 123.7. UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Alright, radio frequencies. Maybe the maybe this is like planning a heist or something like that? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. So we're dealing with something medical here? Or no, no, that's too literal. Hmm. You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says this one can listen in on any station it wants. They must have had massive air width. These things don't come cheap. Wait, who's the game master? Someone very important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the game master's frequency. Then if it's a game, then who's playing then? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. All of this is gone. Left unrealized. I think I'm starting to see what's going on here. This uh, this place must have been used by a bunch of like LARPers or something like that for some, uh, maybe some sort of like uh, radio wave RPG. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My God, it's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. And that's usually the opposite with indie developers. Uh, the cost of air with alone must have been huge. Exactly. This schedule, I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. Uh, what else? Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? Let's see. Uh, it looks like some uh, undercover counterintelligence. Uh, it's just a failed business. I'm guessing it's just a failed business. Only question is, what the hell were they making? Yes, that is the question. Like he's ready to lay out a fine theory, crafted together like a puzzle box. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Uh -huh. These people were trying to automate it. 
Make it work on radio computers. Oh, I get and we sound oh, okay, I think we've I know what this place is. It's the meta commentary joke room. I get it. <laughs> Utter madness, he thinks. As a compliment. Let's see. And this was a role playing game? Indeed. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Role playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the Wii World board game, with heat death thrown in. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. How are they planning to do that? Through call-in stations. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the Game Master frequency that listens in on the smaller call-in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. His fascination has swept aside other concerns for the moment. He's a little hooked. Coordinating so many games would take a whole switchboard of people, possibly divided into sub-frequencies. Has anyone ever done this before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Königstein. You know, places with industry. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an inter game before. We just don't have the technology. Hmm. What do you think happened to the company? Maybe they went bankrupt? No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Huh. Indeed, it's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... Let's see. Let's see. Uh, they were insane if they thought they could do that. No, no. Let's see, do we have any money? Let's get other more money so they can finish it and make it even bigger. Well, at least I would say that if they were still operating, but... Hmm... Yeah, no. Let's give them money. It's too late for that, I'm afraid. Hmm. Okay, let's keep moving. The developers are the most advanced RPG in the universe. Oh, I didn't know that was a door. It's a big. It's a bear fridge. You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost, and the bear's eyes are glowing red. Oh, what is this thing? It looks like a giant ice bear. Let's see what's inside. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. Relax, Kim. Uh, oh, wait. Look inside. Oh, boy. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name, Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Let's see. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you. From a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. What's a giant bear shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar in the first place? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. So they tried to sell ice cream for this hyper carnivore? I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. Yeah, no, maybe if they made like a big friendly cartoon bear, then yeah, then maybe they'd have something what here. It's even worse. The bear is still costing them money to this day. Oh, oh, baby. 
maybe that's the source of the curse. Because this uh, because this bear fridge is still running, it's uh, causing the electricity bills to go crazy. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. Yep, I think we found the curse. Let's see, what's the... The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. Someone has scribbled. S, I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio. So I had to hide it somewhere safe. You'll find the filament memory with the offsite copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home, ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, Suliswaf. Let's see. Uh, remind me again, what's a filament memory? It belongs inside a radio computer, storing its memory. It's like a tape. You listen to disco tapes, right? It's like one of your disco tapes, only for a computer. Ah, huh. do you uh, wonder who wrote that note? Looks like someone from that radio game company upstairs. I'm a little surprised they just left their property lying here. Maybe they had to leave in a hurry. That's a plausible hypothesis. Who's the illiterate ginger kid? Some local miscreants, probably. There are tons of them running around in Martinez, ready to stir up trouble. We usually dispatch our junior officers to deal with them. Do you have any idea where the frozen ice cream maker could be? I don't know. I assume it's somewhere close to the ice bear fridge. All right. All right, let's see what this uh, interact with the sandwich. The ham sandwich looks fresh and nutritious in your hand, begging to be eaten. A treat of this magnitude should not be enjoyed alone. Yeah, I'm just going to keep the sandwich in here. It might be useful for something. Where exactly are we here? A secret storage space? Inoperable guns probably means there's a trap. Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cache. Oh, and look, there's a hole in the wall here. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? All right. Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spider webs. Rummaging around, you find rusty rifles hidden away. I found rifles. Are these any good? Most of them are rusty and inoperable, like the rest. But one catches your eye. A bolt action model with a fine wood stock, in better cosmetic order than the others. This one looks nice. That's a rare sight. <clears throat> seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. Uh, what does this mean, a rifle here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. He likes this find. Mm. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment. Let's see, an antique Bel uh, Bel Margrave rifle. Let's see, broken from the past. It's a four-shot bolt-action military rifle with a wooden frame. Probably won't be uh, probably won't be good for me for cash, but might come in handy later. Maybe if I run into like an antique dealer or something like that.
Oh, a frozen ice cream maker that's... Ah. This orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen shut. You slip your fingers under the frozen lid, but the ice is too cold for you to get a good grip. A pry bar would come in handy here. No, this is going to need something else. Some kind of super pry bar. Don't even try to open it with a regular pry bar. You're just wasting your time. If you want to try again, then you need to have the pry bar in your hand, detective. All right, turn the ice cream crank. Turning the crank feels oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. In the distance, you hear water dripping. It's all gone now. You'll never become a poet or an entrepreneur. What better to assuage the creeping sense of failure than some frozen fat and sugar? Let's see. Uh, oh, let's see. Yeah, I got the pry bar there. All right, before we check out around there, let's see what. Mm, an ice cream maker. A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. Kim, what is this thing? Is it a furnace? Looks like, it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. Mm. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice, or several voices, talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber, upstairs. What are you doing? Let's see, I'm not sure, Kim, but I think I could hear someone talking upstairs. Wait, really? You should investigate, see if someone's upstairs. All right. Might be best to, uh, well, if, they, if somebody is upstairs, Hmm. Smear my hands with coal? Uh, okay. A lush layer of coal now covers your skin, sinking into the wrinkles. Your hands look ancient. Maybe you could paint something with this coal. Leave a cave painting for future archaeologists. No, that would be stupid. Hmm. And these voices I heard. Maybe it's the malignant entity? Uh, Plessant says it lives in a chimney. You're right. The rooms do look like they're connected. But malignant entities don't exist. At least not the uh, supernatural kind. Hmm. A hollow ring goes through the furnace. Your toe hurts. Ow! Well, didn't hear anything. So, so I got a plus... Uh, all right, let's kick it. All right. Hello. Something breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney's depths. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease. Then you've awakened the entity. Let's see. Now this is the police. Who's there? Hello? Did you say anything? There's a pause. I can't hear you. Please come upstairs. There's a safety curtain on the second floor. Open it. You hear a low rumble upstairs. The sound of a curtain being pulled aside. After you, officer. Alright. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. An electric sizzle. The room is slightly quieter now. Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Why did you do that? Let's see. 
Let's see. It's black. It's because uh, it's not. Let's see. Hmm. I don't know why I unplugged it. I just. Uh, let's see. Well, I was trying to shut it off so it would stop wasting electricity. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner and an electric freezer. Turning the crank feels it's all gone now. What better to assuage the creeping sense of fa- This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner and an electric freezer. Oh, the never mind. Very low. Melting. Let's see, the pry bar's not strong enough, so... Yeah, I'll just leave that alone then. Insane mesh tank top. Alright, anyways, now that we got that, it's time to call the day. The bear's eyes are dead and empty. Ice inside the fridge. Let's see. Drama. Clinically insane. Oh, where'd you get that one? No, really. Who put that in the drawer? No further comments. Where is your own risk? All right, let's save here. All right, I feel like we're gonna, uh, all right, getting wrapped up in this side quest, and all right, calling it here. All right, we're still, uh, all right, well, I think we figured out what this malignant entity is. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, poor financial fortune, of course it would be with that big monstrous fridge up and running for so long. All right, well, anyways, let's see if we can uh, see what the rest of this building has to offer next time. Till then, folks, this is David on David's Brain. See you when I see you. Bye-bye.